A very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us for another look at the headlines and the program we call Off the Press. We'll take a look at all the headlines with the help of our guest. And today I have with me policy analyst, Ifiogi. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Felicity. Good morning. Good morning to you. All right. Uh, we will start with the Punch newspaper. And the big one here is, can BBOG not Senate on Boko Haram education bill? Uh, it has uh, two writers to that story. FG trying to make incentives agency a lucrative business that's the christian body can talking and then we also have you haven't done enough for insurgency victims bbog tells government all right let's see all the headlines before i come to ifi um, gunmen killed two policemen at ondo checkpoints you'll find details on page uh, five of the paper accident victims rescued uh, by uh, the convoy of senate president uh, along um Asaba Road, Expressway in Delta State. Okay, Asaba Expressway. Onichubo, I beg your pardon. Onichubo, Asaba Expressway in Delta State. That was on Thursday. Uh, we also have four arrested as police shoot two Ogun traders. Ex Buhari ADC wants Kiari service chiefs sacked. Uh, that's on page 18 of the paper. Uh, just underneath uh, these ones that I've read, that's uh, showing on your screen. Uh, you're not qualified to join us, APC tells Fire Shea. Ex-Unilag lecturer jailed 21 years for raping admission seeker. And then uh, we have Ogun Assembly proposes insurance pension for Amote Kuko. Okay, let me just come to you first, so I don't just drone on and they hear my voice reading all the headlines. Let's start with this one that says, can BBOG mm -hmm. not Senate? Boko Haram education bill. You're basically trying to give hope to the irredeemable, is what I think the bill is. And that's what I think most of the, uh, the critics are complaining about with the bill. Uh, it's basically, I think, I think maybe it's, I'm just trying to tap and um, take a stab in the dark where I'm trying to guess why the bill would have been engendered in the first place. So I know we all know that there's a general uh, um, conception that this, uh, most of the Boko Haram, uh, uh, pe uh, most of the bo people in Boko Haram tend to be, have lost all hope in any kind of economic uh, development have probably not been gone to school. But I don't necessarily think that's true. I think that they are, it's a proper, proper ecosystem of terrorism. So I think for, you, for us to try and feed it means that we're trying to sort of, in a way, try and uh, legitim legitimize what their concerns are. Uh, some are actually suggesting that it might be because um, they seem to have exhausted all option and they're now looking, this is like clutching at straws. That's what some people who do not uh, see the need for this are saying. I think what they should focus on is actually just trying to do a general empowerment in wherever these, uh, these sort of insurgents spring from, right? You need to look at the actual uh, cause, and cause and effect of joining such a, a terrorist organization. So we know that, well, we've been told in the last uh, couple of weeks and months that there is a real state of emergency in the North, especially when it comes to poverty uh, levels, comes to uh, provision of any kind of uh, basic human rights and from education and any welfare sort of issues. So I think focusing on those uh, core concerns will probably help us more than trying to feed into something that is that will not yield any kind of productivity. No, because, I mean, uh, the BBOG is telling the government they're not doing enough for those. I mean, this morning we're talking in the news about the IDPs. Some of them are victims of the insurgency and they still don't have all the care uh, that they need. But let's uh, move on to other headlines now. The, uh, let's look at this one. Okay, I mean, this, is, this comes in, in, in the tide of the BBC documentary and basically the fallback of that documentary. I think it's really opened the floodgates in terms of trying to decide uh, what is acceptable from a social perspective. We all know that we're in a very patriarchal society and it seems almost like it's, uh, it's more or less in, 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 inculcated in our, in our system, our culture, that we just give up, you know, we just give it up just to get ahead and have uh, a better position as a, as a female. And I, and I think this is really sending that message that, that, it's, that it's no more, and this is not going to happen again. And, I th and I, I'm encouraging more uh, decisions like that and more judgments like that. 
All right, before we move on to the other papers, let's uh, look at what's at the top of the uh, punch, uh, just above the masthead. Uh, you will see a uh, prepare for electricity price hike, TCN tells Nigerians. I don't know if that can be flashed on the screen again. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, right beside it, you have flight diversion, British Airways to compensate Nigerian passengers. Uh, some would say that's uh, good news. APC asks uh, Supreme Court to review bias of judgment, remove DIRI, and then depleting ECA signals revenue pressure, say LCCI Institute, page 29. You want to speak on any of that before? Yeah, I mean, I'll just look at the uh, top, uh, I think it's a top banner where it talks about the ECA and the excess crude account and, and the revenue pressure. Mm. I mean, we, that story was covered yesterday where we talked mm. about, mm. Uh, you know, us losing uh, 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 the accounts being depleted at least, I think, 400% or so. And uh, I don't think it's going to get any better if you succumb to the pressure of, uh, the, of you know, of, of, of producing revenue. Because it, you're basically taking from an account where excess has been paid in. By definition, it's excess. You need to find other ways of generating that revenue and uh, moving forward. Otherwise, you're not going to be in a, a, a favorable position in the coming, in the coming um, years. And um, I think I also want to talk about, let's look quickly at uh, the uh, power sector. Um, uh, uh, price uh, hike? Yeah, the price hike. From, so TCN is a transmission company of Nigeria, basically. And I know if you know, look, look at the value chain of power production in Nigeria and how we get and get distributed to our homes, we know that we have the generation company and we have the transmission company and then we have the dis discos. And for whatever reason, the federal government has attacked primarily the discos. So I think it's a good step that from the, uh, I think a few weeks ago, we talked about the, um, we talked about the um, Bureau of Public Enterprises, the, the, the basically the, the, the arm that, pub, um, that privatized, that, that, saw the, that, that oversaw the privatization of the actual companies. And then also TCN speaking as well, shows that there's a general like insipid uh, problem within that particular uh, value chain. So I'm glad that they're speaking up about it as well because they need to sort of, open up the market and, and not have any uh, price, uh, heavy, heavy price uh, regulations around it. All right. Uh, the nation seemed to recap um, um, the same headline, but theirs is phrased quite differently. It says, amnesty plan for repentant Boko Haram members, risky. Chege, Emeka and Gige, others caution as Senate debates bill on rehabilitation. Um, if he had spoken on that already. Uh, let's see what other headlines uh, we have here. Okay, uh, Buhari won't quit over insecurity, says government. Uh, that's Minister of Information. Um, he's there and he's also saying we will regulate social media. Uh, that bill is not going anywhere anytime soon, apparently. Um, <laughs> uh, let me just take your thought on um, him coming out to say people calling for the president to resign. Okay, I mean, was... like last, I think it was two weeks ago when uh, Senator Abarabi uh, addressed the floor yeah. and made the, you know, the public complaints about security, uh, state of security in the, in the nation. And, um, you know, he obviously was very bold in trying to assert that uh, or to suggest that, uh, you know, the governor, um, sorry, the president President right should yeah. resign, and I don't think uh, um, our president took it lightly because soon after that there was a snowball effect of different kind of uh, different kind of reactions. reactions. So I think I'm, one of the most uh, surprising was his op -ed, opinion and um, editorial piece uh, at with, with I think an American publication called Christian Today, which typically is a, almost like a polarizing kind of uh, position. But we're glad that right now. We are, we're trying to find solutions more than anything else. All right. Um, we also have Leon's deputy, uh, Lyons deputy, Supreme Court verdict, stain on me. APC seeks reversal of bias of judgment. Um, certificate not having the same name concurrently. You have a different name here. You have there's a similarity, but it's not the same. Affidavit Swan and all of that. It's saying that the court verdict is a stain on him. Well, that's his take this morning. Um, uh, we also have something on rep sick isolation of colleague fear over disease. 
Uh, what could that be? Go find details on page 41 of the Nation newspaper. Reps seek isolation of colleague fear over disease. What kind of disease? you find details on page 41 of the paper. Again, the uni lag lecturer who, get, uh, who got a 21-year jail term for rape is also under Nation newspaper. And uh, just above where you have amnesty plan for repentant Boko Haram members, risky. Uh, uh, not so clear. We'll just read it out for you. Uh, Delta Rep opposes a sting citing Delta reps oppose sitting, rather, citing of federal poly in his state. Uh, I don't know why I'm having trouble reading that. Uh, I'll take it again. Uh, Delta rep opposes citing of federal poly in his state. Oil prices uh, nears $60 per barrel. Uh, details on page 8 and 12, respectively. Um, I don't know if there's something you want to talk on here before we move on to I the think next we paper. Most of, we talk about the, yes, yeah, the we talked like, about most yeah, of all, most all of the uh, headlines uh, here. We we'll just move on then to uh, the Vanguard newspaper. They are going with a different story now, aside from what the, the Punch and uh, the Nation. Uh, the Vanguard is uh, facing insecurity squarely and says 10 feared dead in Edo cult killings. Uh, it has four riders to that story. Um, Edo State Government condemns renewed cold clash. Night victim of Uweru headsman attack dies at Del Sud. Uh, tenth victim rushed in for gunshot complications. Urubo Group threatens government, says they may resort to self-help if. While on the other side of the country at uh, the villa, we have the president having two people with him, uh, the good state governor, Prince Dakbo Abiodun, and of course, an APC chieftain and former governor as well uh, on the front page. Just beside it, you have fathers of Amalgiri children should be arrested. Sultan Oni Sanusi speaking. Uh, details of that is on page 10 of the paper. NGDC cooperates with forensic auditors, FD Direct IMC members. And uh, just beneath that, we have insecurity. Buhari won't resign, says Lai Mohammed. It's time to revisit the 2014 Confab report on security, Gambari speaking. And uh, we have Oshun. Oyechola raises 11 man team to review education policies. These are some of the headlines you will find mm. on the front page. And of course, the fact that the Lagos State uh, House of Assembly is legalizing move, uh, it's in moves to legalize a multiple holds public hearing on Monday is also captured on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. I'll just leave it open for you to pick uh, which okay. of them. Okay, let's look at the Amotekun um, bill. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad that they have taken a little more restraint in terms of trying to pass the bill and trying to be more inclusive. Because it's such a it's such a um, it's such an important bill in terms of trying to determine the square. And it's one of those bills that sort of gal it can either galvanize or fracture uh, it's uh, the, uh, the people that are that are going to be part of the bill. So so um, I'm glad that they've done that. And I'm hopefully that through the public hearing we have to hear what people have to say about it and. Hopefully they'll get they some incorporate kind of, yeah. that. And then also just move, moving swiftly on to the banner uh, story as well on Ajakuta uh, Mills. Ajakuta is one of one of the oldest uh, in, industrial, like I won't call it a relic, I won't call it like a hopeless position. And 19, it's been around since 1979. It never got around to finishing it. it was There's always to... one move uh, or the other. At some point it's in the news and then it's not there. There's moves to... What is going on? Ajakuta is older than I am. That's the honest truth. And and <laughs> and I and I. So it's it's one of those things. So, but, but but on a more serious note, I'm glad that money has been poured into it because it signals the importance of whoever our investors are in trying to make it um, in trying to dedication to Nigeria's development. One of the one of the challenges we have, especially in trying to get industrialized and technologically advanced, is that we do not have steel as a raw material. So we cannot have any of our tools. We don't have machine uh, uh, capability to produce a machine in, in mass quantities. And so I think with the help of Afrexim Bank and um, I think it's the Russian Export Bank, Export, Export Center, they've come together and brought uh, 1.46 billion, pledged 1.46 billion for the development of uh, Ajakuta and hopefully you know, once they're able to finalize, I think this may have been a fallback of their meetings in Sochi um, uh, late last year, and I think it was sec um, third quarter last year. So hopefully we can see some kind of good results and 
Nigeria. But it's just a bit sad that uh, Nigeria, unfortunately, is we're talking about this 100-year uh, difference between when America was industrialized with Carnegie and what we're seeing right now. What's a, what's a shame. All right, uh, you, you're not speaking on the Edo situation at the moment. Everything wow, Edo situation is going to, is, I mean, it's just basically a satellite of what is going on in the country. I mean, people realize that they can actually get away with a lot more than they would ordinarily get, get away with. Me, right. And that is, you're going to see other, unfortunately, before we, things get better. All right, let's take a look at the This Day newspaper. The FG, for, uh, Buhari won't resign over security challenges. Poverty alleviation central to protecting families, says President. AAPC approaches Supreme Court to review bias of judgment. There are a couple of writers to that story. Uh, we also have uh, just been it that. Mariam Sander asks appeal courts to quash her death sentence. That's the alleged um, the husband killer. The court has convicted her. So, uh, page eight of the paper. Uh, if you go to the top, there's a little bit of weather report for you if you'd like to look at that. It looks like rain in some parts of the country today. Uh, but just above the masthead, you see discos. We will stop takeover of Siemens. That's. Um, Cites legal agreement with FG. DMO urges states to imbibe debt management strategies. That's uh, also <laughs> on the front page. <laughs> A quick flip if I come back to that laughter. Ihe oh. Dioha <laughs> and the demand of history. That's um, the edifying elucidations on the back page. So, um, what well, was making you chuckle? Well, I mean, I'm up above the masthead always <laughs> gives me a lot to talk about with, it with this day because it's always sort of related to... Business? Uh, yeah, business. So, I would... First of all, I mean, DMO urges states to imbibe debt management strategy. The best debt management... And the only debt management strategy is just spend less than you earn. That is the ultimate uh, debt management. Even my, uh, my little niece will tell you the same thing. You know, her pocket money, she knows that if she wants to save it, she spends only a little half of it and has the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. It's a basic principle, a life principle. So even if, I mean, it may seem like I'm simplifying it, but it's actually that simple. So we just need to find a way of cutting our coats according to yes. our size. And then going, just, just to address this, I know I talked about it a little before, but there's a new angle with them trying to uh, uh, reverse the privatization and then also bring on board cement. To, uh, to take over the disco uh, operations in Nigeria. Again, I think I had spoken about this earlier on this week. Siemens was at some point, had a lot of issues uh, in Nigeria and even with that, with that um, company as well. So we have to be very careful that we don't, you know, we're not sort of treading on the verge of illegality with these matters. Before I let you go, I wanted to speak on her appealing her debt sentence. I think that, um, Women in Nigeria, I think I spoke about this earlier as well, women in Nigeria are just generally at a disadvantage because of the patriarchal structure as in Nigeria. This, poor, this lady has been through a lot and I think that having her, having her as for appeal, she has, she has every right to um, uh, seek, you know, seek uh, appeal uh, on, her, on her sentence. You know, death sentence is uh, something that you don't... I can't remember the last time Nigeria actually... No, Carrie, no. I, yes. I'm sure that will be committed to life sentence, yes. but let's see what happens yes. going forward. Yes. Thank you very much for thank coming so on the program. Thank you so much Always a pleasure. <laughs> Always a pleasure is mine. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Always a pleasure to know you're on the other side and uh, we are here. We'll see you again soon. It's Friday. Go have some fun. Bye for now.